Alright, time for another graph physics video presentation and such. So, comments, and then we'll do some Ken Wheeler, I think, and uh, such. So, please don't get mad if I bring up Tesla again. Yes, well, I've sort of made the point. I mean, this is un very unfortunate that people realize that conventional physics is full of shit, and then they go find, they dig up some other dead artifact to follow instead so it's it's you know it's just like religion oh if it, well if it ain't jesus then i'll go with silly mohammed um you know it's just that bad and you know tesla isn't the answer tesla didn't have the answers tesla was good for one thing um in terms of he had a bit of an inspiration when it came to phased motors but otherwise it his theory was garbage okay it's not my intention to bother you. Well, again, I, frankly, I should, I, shouldn't I be bothered if the truth is that you're just following another false prophet? Uh, but you are correct that his transmission system didn't work. Well, none of his transmission systems worked because he didn't understand fundamentally how the mechanism works. Uh, in the real world, it wouldn't work in any world. <laughs> As a fact is, he did, he did got <laughs> the money to build his tower. Right, we all read, everybody knows the story, so he got a pretty good reputation from his phased motor um, invasion, and uh, he rode on that um, a long way. And, you know, a billionaire, uh, back in those days anyway, J.P. Morgan uh, financed him. Uh, so yeah, you know what do you want? What do you want, what do you want me to say that uh, the, the the stupid idiot, uh, whatever that guy is, Tesla, you know the fake Tesla, you know in the sense of making electric cars that are DC cars, <laughs> you know calling them Teslas, um, I, you know whatever. You want to say that everything he does is brilliant or he knows something about science? Of course he doesn't. Uh, you want to, you want to go through the history of how much money rich people waste on bullshit? Ugh, I mean, fuck. Um, <clears throat> but things just didn't work out. So you're saying things just didn't work out. See, you're just not conceding the point. His theory was fundamentally wrong. Okay, that's the fact. As he thought. Well, I don't know what he thought. Uh, exactly right he's supposed to always have this he, he says so oh, I always see it and I see it completed and I see it finished well obviously what he was seeing wasn't right uh, the famous Wardy cliff or whatever the hell it is tower had many technical problems until it was finally abandoned the theory has many technical problems so again <laughs> just you know many people think no one wanted to support him but that's a lie well, again, he didn't, he didn't have a whole bunch of supporters. What he had was a bunch of famous celebrity supporters and rich people. And that certainly, you know, maximizes your potential. Tesla was famous and very respected back in the 1910s. <laughs> yeah. And where have I said anything otherwise? So, again, this whole preaching to me about Tesla, I just don't need it. Um... You know, I haven't said anything inaccurate, so fuck you. This is just bullshit. You just want to keep bringing up Tesla. Uh, things just didn't work out as he thought in his theory. So that's the whole point, is people are using Tesla as the alternative. Like, Tesla knew better than Einstein and Edison and all these other people. And he didn't know any better. He just knew different. But it wasn't better. Ugh. Fuck. And I guess, <clears throat> from my perspective, um, you know, Tesla was, I mean, it's hard to even, there's no point in doing this etherist thing, because they all turn out to be etherists, and it's just so, so unnecessary. I just don't, I don't understand the attachment to this concept of fucking ether. It's first, it's a biblical term, <laughs> in a lot of ways, um, and it's, it just doesn't, how is that reductionism? It just doesn't seem the scientific approach is to sit there and assume a mechanism underlying the mechanism. No, the mechanism has parts, and the parts aren't supposed to be mechanisms. 
I mean, I just don't understand the attachment. Again, I appreciate the reply, even though you share significant contempt for someone who just wants to understand your own opinion. Well, that's not what you did. Okay, you sat here and gave me some spiel about how the universe needs to have woo in it. You weren't sitting there saying, what's your opinion? You were giving me your fucking useless, tripey, bullshit opinion. So, you know, <laughs> it's just a mischaracterization. And again, as I pointed out, I'm really not here to opine. I'm here to argue points. So you explain why there's any necessity for me to believe there's any woo in the universe. Like you have any kind of evidence that anything intelligent has anything to do with it. Or anything even uh, remotely organized. <laughs> you know. Alright, Dustin Buck. Uh, okay, so something is bothering me. Eh, whatever. Um, so, I, I mean, I have no conversation here about black holes. I mean, it's, it's theoretical crap. I don't, I think there are big, dense objects. But, you know, we can't tell the difference from a distance between, you know, the head of a pin and the sun. I mean, realistically. So when we say, oh, it's small, it doesn't mean anything. Um, the theory of black holes is compressing matter beyond what any rational person I would think would think is possible to compress matter. So if you understand that matter is made out of parts, you understand the parts can't get a certain closeness to each other. And frankly, that's why the sun is on fire, is because it's already too big. It's already got too much pressure and the atoms are breaking inside because of the pressure. So. You know, you want to believe in black holes? Go ahead and believe in them, but don't tell me I have to. Um, a black hole is a lot of mass packed into a small space. <clears throat> so they say with absolutely zero evidence. Okay, we can see the effect of its gravity. No, we can't. We see the effect of gravity. Now, whatever's, <clears throat> you know, the, <clears throat> the space that those stars that we see circling something gravitational is huge. I mean, it could be light years across. That's how much space that is. So whether there's a black hole in there or a big or a sun a million times bigger than our sun that isn't on fire, we couldn't tell the difference. It's dark mass, you could say. Yes, there's dark mass. We know that exists. It's not producing light. All right, but because of the nature of the black hole, no light can escape. Again, just more crap theory, in my opinion. There's absolutely no evidence you can retard the progress of a photon with gravity. There's no evidence for it. Um, the light doesn't have any problem escaping from the sun. Uh, so, I mean, wh where's your argument? The light coming from the sun is white light, I mean, essentially. Um, the only color the sun has has it because of our atmosphere. Um, <clears throat> so the sun's not being retarded. I mean, th theoretically, there's no retardation of the photons as they attempt to escape the gravity of the sun. So we really don't have any evidence of this photons can't get away bullshit. Um, so if we can agree, no. So far, no. Then by logic, there is a duality there. Um, I don't think that by logic is necessary, but either way, um, yeah, I think it's just garbage theory. Either space does curve, or you have found the missing energy for the ether. Well, again, I don't know how you logically put that those two friggin' things together. The only way the ether can have energy is that every bit of the ether has to be moving. The only way you can duplicate what exists, that is gravity, is to essentially create an external pressure. And the external pressure has to come from the ether itself. So again, <laughs> it's just my theory. And then you still have the problem of explaining magnetism where you're going to have to say, well, the ether has two kinds. Electron ether and proton ether. Positive ether and negative ether to create the phenomenon of charge. It's just, you know, whatever. I, I just, I hate this obsession with this fucking ether. As per your argument that for the ether to work, there needs to be energy. 
yeah well again you didn't explain anything here how does this how does a black hole require the uh, whatever you're stating the ether has that you found the missing energy I don't understand how you've described it in any sense there can't be a stack either I don't know ether uh, stack you mean static yes there can't be a static ether which means every little bit of ether is moving which means you might as well just call it particles moving so why fuck with this <coughs> why bother with the ether it's superfluous and inefficient to the purpose it doesn't provide a rational mechanism the foundation of the universe isn't little things that go beep 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 uh, it's not little dominoes and it's not little push-up pegs it's just not <sighs> it doesn't account for anything as I pointed out if you start making your ether in confined things the things that can't go anywhere but all they can do is vibrate or expand and contract the problem is the geometry. There's no way to set up lines that mean you can go in straight lines. And we know the universe has straight lines in it. <sighs> Shit. Alright, that's it for comments. So, to the Ken Wheeler crap. Alright, so two videos. One I haven't played yet. Uh, but one, um, <clears throat> he does this plane of inertia thing. So he does set up his ferrocell with only two LEDs kind of giving the trick away in some respects, but not not accounting for that. Not saying, look, with two LEDs, you can clearly see they just make these curved lines, and, you know, each LED makes a curved line, and you overlap all those curved lines, and it makes a spirograph pattern, and it looks all cool. Well, you know, it just looks that way. It doesn't mean it is that way. Um, and so, obviously, the LEDs are affecting the illusion. Um, showing you only part of what exists. So one LED only shows you a tiny piece of what exists. Uh, and it's showing you a deception in the sense that you have to explain that curved line. Well, why is the line curved? And what exactly is the ferro material doing while this image is being produced? Now, Ken Wheeler knows, like I said, he's seen the images of the, under a magnifying glass with uh, uh, a microscope what this thing's doing. So let's not pretend. The little bits of ferro material are lining up just like iron filings. Okay, there's a big clump of them at the positive side when you hold the magnet sideways, and another clump of them at the neg negative side, and they're all pointing out. And that's what they're doing physically. And this curved line is just representing what light does when it reflects off those surfaces, that each one is at a different angle. So it's only certain ones will reflect light back to your eye. And that's all you're seeing. And now the double line is <clears throat> being caused by internal reflections in the glass. And uh, so it just, but it adds to the deception. It's just a false signal. Um, so, you know, so I'll just play a little bit of this. It's funny. But also to right at the center here. All right, so he thinks this plane of inertia, that is the place where the two, the middle of the magnet, um, you know, this is what the magnet's really doing, okay? I mean, the gravity force goes in mixed, and it comes out segregated out of the magnet, and it comes out in straight lines, and the magnets will line up, so where there's a lot of red, it'll line up pointing black end first, red end trailing. The red is repulsive, the black is attractive. And as you mix the field, that is, more of this black is getting in, then the magnet's going to tilt, and it tilts, and it tilts. And when it gets to the middle here, it's going to be parallel to the magnet. The black end will line up with the red end. The red end will line up with the black end of the little ferro material. And so it'll, it will line up geometrically different. And that's all you're seeing in the ferro cell. It's the same pattern. You're just seeing it based on reflections cast at a very sharp angle. So if you took iron filings and you shined a light on them at a very sharp angle, maybe you could create some illusions like this, you know, of the ferro cell, of the curved lines. You know that if you wanted to see what the iron filings were, were doing, the worst way to see it 
would be to tilt the paper. You'll put your eye level with the paper and look at the iron filings at, at very sharp angles. You know that's not going to give you a very good view. And that's all this is doing. It's saying don't let light come in from any other angles. Just let light come in from one angle and view. And you know you're going to get a distortion. And that's all this is. See this? Also, to see also as it as it uh, as it uh, wags. I love the lag part, just because that's just so funny. Of course, there's a lag because the ferro material all has to move, and, and clearly the stuff very close to the magnet is going to move very quickly, and the stuff further away is being affected by a lot less force, and so it takes it longer to be affected by the field. So just kind of obvious that it's going to change its position slower because there's not as enough force to push it fast um, you know so again just this is just such a, a deception to use a, a, a tool like this um, and it's not like I said it's hard to even call it a tool because it does nothing but distort your view it it's, again it's like me taking the paper with the iron filings and just tilt you know so you're looking at and seeing the pattern I'm just going to tilt the paper until the pattern becomes obscured and then I'm going to shine light on certain angles and we'll see if we can make it look like something else and that's all this is doing it's not enhancing your vision it's distorting your view and yet he's selling it as this is what it really is doing so there's nothing magical here so on this line of inertia the magnets are all lining up um, you know parallel to the magnet north and south south north south north south north and they're repulsive and so that's why you're getting this straight line reflection is because all of those are lined up the same way where in these other things they're radially coming out of the magnet at the positive end and at the uh, negative end blah 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 so there's nothing revealed here all right um so this is probably enough there's it doesn't say anything Over here right at the periphery as I actually move it a little bit you'll notice there'll be a lag you see that? so he doesn't explain what the lag is from but what he should say is well it's because the little bits of, of the little magnets have to move as I change this magnet I'm going to change where the iron filings line up yeah that's what's going to happen uh, as I actually So the reason why these lines are so tightly arced is because it's a very powerful magnet. So that's why the, the lines get narrower the stronger the magnet. So I can't keep it in one spot, it wants to turn. Yeah, see, and then he's getting the same straight lines, the same arc lines are coming off the edges of the magnet, too. So here he's pretending the line of the, this, this in line of inertia is something special, and it makes a line. Well, now the other two edges of the magnet are now making those lines. So again, this is just about taking a piece of paper, flat piece of paper, shining light on it, and then you turn it, and you can make all kinds of different appearances different things will become visible and different other things will become invisible so this is just such crap this is such crappy physics use a distorto viewer that's all this ferro cell is it's just a distort of you all right so off to this thing uh, light and matter reconciled in simplex cosmic paradigm of observed phenomenon <laughs> so this ought to be good funny <laughs> this ought to be funny physics I like you was uh, brought up on uh, an enormous amount of convoluted ignorant beliefs as far as science and countless other things the one thing that I always found differentiated myself is I absolutely refuse to believe illogical nonsense. I can never come. So it's just, you know, it's just such a statement. Everybody on Earth says that, right? You have to demonstrate logic. And so I'm just saying, obviously, you can be skeptical of somebody's logic if they're playing you. You know, they're doing little fake experiments for which they're tricks. They're just parlor tricks. And you can say, well, this isn't a very sincere person. He's always trying to trick me. Into a reconciliation that uh, Mother Nature 
is a uh, convoluted. Um, Again, it said this six million times, and it could be argued that from everybody's perspective, they could also make such a statement that why would Mother Nature do the God thing? Why would Mother Nature do this? Why would Mother... Blah, blah, blah. And this whole thing that Mother Nature is some sort of mother in the first place is so stupid. Nature is a just a, a machine, and the machine doesn't have to have any useful function. Nature can just as easily make steamroller as it can make cupcake. Mess of mishmash. Here's one thing, there's another thing, yada yada. Specifically... So he has all that mishmash in his theory. He has a bunch of tornadoes and swirly bits all over the frickin' place and no explanation for how they do any of that stuff. None at all. I mean, just no explanation for what's causing any of it. Uh, and talking about pulsars, like uh, radio wave uh, pulsars, X-ray pulsars, gamma pulsars, and galactic jets, which they actually also, too, called relativistic. Yes, well, again, I didn't know you were going to talk about all that crap, because none of that is simplex, and all of that is just their description. They give something a name. So they've done some of this crap where they call galaxies in their earlier form I thought they called those quasars. And there's some there's another. I'm just saying it. That's the idiotic part, right? That they call the same thing two different things depending on how old it is. If it's far away, it's one thing. If it's close up, it's another thing. I mean, that's sort of bullshit. So astronomy's full of bullshit. Yes. Jets. Here's one end of a view of a relativistic jet. Uh, here in the center, it's emitting trillions and trillions of tons of hydrogen. Also, too, over here on the far left, we can uh, take a look at the edge of a uh, galaxy in this uh, hyperboloidal shape here. So now this is just like finding the smiley face, <clears throat> you know, uh, arrangement of stars and doing the same. This is just astrology, right? I mean, this is just doing this stupid, I can see something in the clouds and so therefore the clouds are made of water buffaloes because I saw a water buffalo in the clouds I, I mean this is so bad um, you know this draw conclusion based on the aberrant rather than the average and we actually see this hourglass shape in the geomagnetic procession Oh yeah, we see all that. Yeah, sure. I'm, I'm, totally. I see it spinning around. You know, I don't see it doing any of that. That defines a little more frequency, necessity. Uh, yes, right. It's somehow spinning opposite directions. Okay, fine. See, I mean, this is just such bad physics. So to draw conclusions because of the way it arranges in a shape, you know, and it looks like. So again, it's just more of this crap. It looks like. Well, 99.999999% of the time, it doesn't look like. Data, and this is, of course, the conjugate geometry of the universe, and, of course, these would be the magnetic, the toroidal magnetic, and we have the emission also. Right, so all of that totally explained where all the energy came from for all of these stars to be doing all of this tornadoing, where they're all tornadoing somehow, all this energy, all these pits of matter. And from what source does all that energy come from? Two of trillions of tons of uh, hydrogen. And over here on this image, we're looking at a, a pulsar um, with X number of solar masses. Now, specifically when science... You're not, obviously, in this image, you're not looking at anything real. <laughs> you're looking at a synthesized image. <clears throat> Scientists and common human beings talk about uh, emissions. And actually, let me draw a frequency here. Looking at uh, infrared here, and then visible somewhere right about here. And then uh, over here, we got x ray. And then. Over well, surprisingly, x ray is way over here. <clears throat> so it's. If you really look at it, I mean, the, the difference between infrared and. Uh, visible and ultraviolet is proportional, but x-rays are a whole nother big jump.
they're a thousand times uh, higher frequency. Over here we have the Greek letter G looking at uh, gamma. I mean, I think x-rays are 10. Uh, let's see, 10. Well, I won't try to do the math um, in terms of figuring out the wavelength. But they're <clears throat> like 10 nanometers compared to visible light. <clears throat> the average being 500, let's say, or whatever. So, you know, 500 versus 10. You know, big jump. And then something in the order of 20, 30, possibly even 60 magnitudes higher than that, we have what should be. Let me erase all this stuff here. Let me uh, eliminate out this uh, picture. We should have uh, the galactic jet that we see here. The reconciliation of light and matter, which I've been so, so again, it's this, this, who knows what is it, the reality is, right? Uh, because they have no technology to be able to tell whether these are just two things that just happen by coincidence to fall on top of each other. They really don't know any of that stuff, you know. And so you can, and you'd see all these obvious little defects in here that make it not consistent with what it appears. Look, see, this is kind of swirling around. And, but yeah, there's no real consistency with this edge here. Why is this such a sharp edge? And you know, so there's lots of flaws you could find. And we know that the geometry isn't flawed in the sense that it is demands some kind of um, <clears throat> precision. Uh, the mathematics requires it. Well, I mean, the physics requires it, frankly. I've been working on it for years. I knew I had to have the most divine simplex answer possibly imaginable because we're not talking so, so again he keeps saying that somehow this is simple and simple how 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 was i how am i supposed to think it's simple that what things just spin for no reason they swirl a bunch of atoms that are out there for what reason how they get there did they come out of the thing or are they going into the thing i mean it's just no explanations there's nothing simple about any of this crap he's suggesting about different things when we're actually talking about uh, draw it again over top of this yeah, and clearly we could uh, understand that these things don't do this forever you know where magnets seem to be able to be magnetic for a very very long time why does it stay consistently in that pattern Oh, that's because the magnet isn't doing anything. It's just filtering what's coming in and it's just throwing it back out a different way. Diagram. Oops. Infrared. Somewhere far over here, we have to have the fundamental particle, the proton. It okay, so um, somehow, so the fundamental particle is the proton, says Ken Wheeler. Okay, and somehow it's at a frequency, somehow. Somehow it's doing some sort of the proton next to proton next to proton. And there's a distance between them that's this vibration here. I don't know. What are you talking about, Ken? It is a fact, as science has observed countless times, that a free neutron released from the nucleus and something the average of 17 minutes. Right, so what does neutrons have to do with it? You didn't say neutrons were on here. So anyway, who knows what that has to do with anything. Becomes a proton. So if all No, it becomes a proton and an electron. You forgot the other part that it becomes. It doesn't become a proton by itself. So apparently he doesn't believe electrons exist. <laughs> you know, so I don't know. I don't, I don't know. It clearly doesn't turn into a proton. So that's just lying about what they say. Three neutrons manifest or turn into a proton and i'm in full agreement with modern science on this I'm so <clears throat> that's not what modern science says so he's just clearly uh straw manning uh modern science and in a worse sense he's doing that straw manning where you make it into your girlfriend or something like we're friends me and modern physics because uh, you know we're co totally compatible and he's just lying that's not what they say 
So they don't agree with you, Ken. You don't agree with them, Ken. And their empirical observations on this are not to be discounted. Then you just did discount them. You totally ignored their observations and their statement, and you said something different than what they say. So you just lied about what they say, clearly. We fundamentally only have one particle in the reconciliation. So again, it's more nonsense. So I, I don't know why people do this crap either. I mean, we know charge exists. It's one of the most outstanding, obvious, glaring phenomenon. Uh, and it's the whole foundation for Maxwell in the sense that all of those equations put together to make this connection between magnetism and electricity clearly <coughs> um, the, the, the transition is from <clears throat> the idea of a monopole of force and then a dipole of force that is the two opposite poles so you go from having plus and minus separate from each other and two plus and minus smashed next to each other and there's a consequence to smashing them next to each other and that's all that Maxwell's equations are about of light and matter has to be divinely simplex. Divinely simplex, which makes, I mean, what sense does that make? There's obviously nothing simple about the divine in the sense of any kind of God or intelligence. It's not a simple thing. It's a complex thing. Knowing 2 plus 2 equals 4 is not a simple thing. It's kind of a complex thing to be able to know it. Even though it's simple math, it's not a simple thing to know. So we're looking at infrared here, visible. X so again, there's just nothing simple here. No, no explanation of what any of this. So the fuck what? Yes, we know there's different frequencies. Um, we know that um, frequency is a quality of this stuff we call the electromagnetic spectrum are photons. So what? What have you explained? Nothing. Somehow it's made out of protons? Where's the theory for that? Where's the explanation for how protons are really photons? Ray, gamma, and countless magnitudes over here. We have to have a fundamental particle. Yes, that's right. That's what quantum mechanics is basically arguing is that, and, and the Planck constants is that there's a smallest of the small and you don't go any smaller. So there's a limited, there's a place where it does end. It doesn't infinitely go down. The building blocks of absolutely everything. I mean, clearly I would argue the thickness of the photon, the quanton, whatever you want to call it, the force bit, one little force bit, obviously its width is a Planck constant of a sort, and you can't have no distance between them, <laughs> so uh, I guess you can, um, but then you're, you've created a still something that I guess would have a wavelength of the distance of the photon. The galactic jets being emitted from the black holes at the uh, centers of galaxies here. Right here. So whatever, just more, you know, stepping way beyond the evidence you have to tell the story. So you, all you have is tiny pieces of stuff. You have a rabbit ear and a frog leg and uh you know a footprint with 17 toes and uh, you know and you're saying i'm going to tell you the story of what happened here yeah. it's not realistic these are those galactic jets emitted at the hyperboloid or the hourglass shape these galactic jets are trillions and trillions of tons of hydrogen Yes, yes, yes. Well, we know there has to be trillions and trillions of tons of matter in the galaxy because it has gravity indicating that. So we know already that, that there's a whole bunch of stuff. So clearly it can fart, uh, amazing farts. Literally being emitted from black holes. The only thing we actually have to... S so more... I didn't know you believed in black holes. I thought you said black holes are bullshit, but okay, fine. This is just such crap.
empathy is something so incredibly simplex. I don't know why any human being or any scientist... So again, he keeps saying it's so simplex. I don't see any 2 plus 2 equals 4 stuff here at all. I don't see anything simple in any of this crap. How does this relate to, uh, you know, this? <laughs> it's, it's bullshit. Has thought about that before. They literally think light is one thing and matter is another, but I mean... Uh, yes, force is one thing and the matter is d a different thing. That's right, they are different. No, just a fact. One affects the other, and one interferes with the other. That's it. There's no such differentiation between infrared or visible light. So again, uh, somehow he's saying visible light is matter and infrared is not matter. I mean, how are you making a comparison between force and matter by pointing to a force and a force? Oh, that's right, you're not. Or uh, x-ray here, or gamma here. This is all EMR, excuse me, electromagnetic radiation. Yes, we all know that, and, and the, what, but what do you think a frequency is? What, what do you think it's made of? So he, he buys into their bullshit that it's somehow two kinds of wavy bullshitty thing. Some sort of wavy coaxial cable. This is the coaxial circuit of... Right, there, he said it again. How, how's it coaxial? How, does a, how, how is there a forward and a back thing? And a, how is there a circuit? How, how is any of that happening? He thinks there's one of these toroidy things in every little photon. It's all sorts of figure eights. It's a bunch of little affinity signals. Because that looks cool. He's the one dressing nature up, right? I mean, he's the one putting nature in tutus and, you know, little poofy dresses and swirly bits. You know, little swirly dress he's putting on nature. He's the one turning it into a whore. Light with transverse electrical magnetic longitudinal dielectric pulse perturbation. Okay, so that's simple. That jargon is simple. The dielectric pulse perturbation. By what mechanism? How does it do that? That makes up the coaxial circuit of an ether. Uh, yeah, it's a coaxial circuit. He said it again. I mean, I, a coaxial cable is a shielded cable. It's a cable with a cable inside of it insulated between them. How is a photon anything like a coaxial cable? This is stupid. This isn't simple. It's stupid. Perturbation that we call light. But we only think of light as being this super tiny section of EMR. We don't think of... Uh, well, then we think of it perfectly rationally that way. But yes, most of the physicists know that there's an entire spectrum of photons being produced at different frequencies. Yes. But a lot of them just happen to be in this visible range. A lot of them produced by the sun, for example, are in the visible range. Things we don't see is different things. We think of, well, X-ray is one thing, gamma is another, infrared is another. Well, no, they're not. So again, who's he arguing with here? Another straw man. He's just pretending that there's somebody uh, has uh, some confusion about that and that somehow physics doesn't know exactly that, that it's sort of arbitrary. We see visible photons because they happen to be of the best resolution and the less damaging, right? So it would be a lot harder to make an eye that was an x-ray eye because somehow we'd have to make it impervious to the damage the x-rays do there, there because they have this extra energy. And in lower frequencies you get crappy resolution you're not going to be able to see any detail. It just happens that in this visible range you can maximize the amount of information you can gain. It's the best thing to view in. Now yes, the higher resolutions would be better, the higher frequencies, but as pointed out, they're damaging. They're difficult to make a material mechanism that can survive them. So that's why we don't have such mechanisms. That's why some insects can see ultraviolet all right so it's possible but we didn't evolve to that and we're a more complex organism that's and, and we have a different kind of eye and you know it's just not going to work it's going to do more damage than it's going to give us a view of the world so it's not that complicated you know visible light just happens to be the kind of force 
energy that you can glean the most information out of uh, with the least damage. The ratio between damage and resolution is uh, peak. There's a lot of the energy and um, it's at a high enough frequency to get detailed resolution. They're all one and the exact same thing. Miss Ridiculous is thinking that ice, water, and steam are three different things, and of course they're not. Well, they are fundamentally different things. Yes, the geometry of the structure is fundamentally different. So when it's ice, it's you know they're forming a circle, the atoms. When it's uh, liquid, they're broken. Uh, you know, and when they're steam, they have no geometry at all, barely. So what do we? You know, what are you arguing? Of course they're different. They're physically, chemically, um, structurally, let's just say structurally, different. The distinction is not irrelevant or meaningless. And the distinction between infrared and x-ray is not meaningless. It's very meaningful to an electron. The electron leaves the atom when it's hit by x-rays. The electron merely vibrates in the atom when it's hit by infrared. Huge fucking difference. Are all one fundament. I, I mean, it's like making a plastic gun and putting real bullets in it. There's a difference. <laughs> you know, it's stupid to say all guns are the same. No, they're not. Uh, it's stupid to say all fabrics are just as strong. They, you know, it's, they're not. It's fundamentally different to make your clothes out of paper or make them out of uh, carbon fiber. Obviously, so one thing. So. Let me actually eliminate out this diagram and erase all this stuff here. So, depending on the size of the solar mass, here we have, and this of course represents the geomagnetic emission, and here's another larger... Well, you know, this idea that there's emission from any solar mass is just stupid, so I don't know what this... So he's drawing galaxies now, and somehow he's drawn them the wrong shape because the comes out of the flat side but whatever solar mass and another larger solar mass and here we have something that's super massive that has no magnitude as I defined count okay super massive but it has no magnitude now again this is supposed to be a simple explanation now it doesn't sound like a complete contradiction so more mass less magnitude and that's supposed to be comprehensible. More water is somehow less water. It just doesn't make any sense at all. At this time, something supermassive that has no magnitude. Because the conjugate nature of the geometry of the universe is dielectric and magnetic. Yeah, so what? And how does that explain how you turn something into nothing? That's what you're saying. So there's a certain point where all these somethings turn into nothing somehow. If I put a bunch of something together, I get nothing. <clears throat> How'd that happen? How's that simple? It sounds stupid or crazy. One thing that actually defines a, a black hole is a supermass with no magnitude. So we could make like a super bomb and it wouldn't explode anything. I mean, you know, I can make a big enough nuclear bomb and then nothing will happen when it blows up. <laughs> yeah. Because there's no magnitude now somehow. Magnitude which is contrary to empirical human experience on it. It's contrary to logic, yes. So you're making an extraordinary claim. It's called an extraordinary claim. When you do something that's contrary to every piece of discernible evidence we've ever experienced, that is, nothing disappears when I add more of it, um, then, yeah, you, you have an extraordinary claim. You need something like extraordinary evidence. You need something like ordinary evidence. You need some piece of evidence to indicate why I should believe this horse shit. Why does it lose all its magnitude? Earth, but it's actually hyperlogical. Hyperlogical. That means it's there's a hyper number of facts connecting it to reality somehow. Like it's so obviously logical. I mean, I could say that water is wet is hyperlogical because the word water was used to describe the stuff, water, and wet was used to describe what water does to you when you pour it on your head it wets you. So the words match. The words were created for the very purpose of describing the phenomenon, so that's hyper-logical. You can't escape the logic. It's so fucking logical. 
because the words were invented for the very purpose of making the statement. The statement can't possibly be wrong because the statement was created to be right. <laughs> it, it's just, it can't be any other way. It was created to say the one thing. And the conjugate nature of the universe. And here we have the emissions of trillions and trillions of tons of hydrogen. Atomic hydrogen. Here oh yes, here we see the admission of a tiny percentage of the mass of the objects. So what? That's right, you can take a little tank, a little CO2 canister, and you can blow up a pretty big balloon with it. So somehow, the, when you uncompress the matter, it takes up more space. Ooh, what a surprise. We don't know that. Yeah, we do know that. So, no surprise there. You can suck up a whole ton of atmosphere and compress it into a cylinder this, this big. Here we have a radio wave pulsar. Radio. Here we have a uh, X-ray pulsar. X. Inc so we're just talking now about at what frequency it's producing the energy based on what frequency it's probably spinning at or rotating. But blah 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 blah. Again, their science is pretty thin. This astronomy. We seeing magnitude of solar masses here. Of course, this is inappropriate, increasing solar masses. Here we have a, a, a gamma. Hello, there we go. Here we have a gamma pulsar. So we have radio, x-ray, gamma, and finally, in the case of the black hole galactic jets, which we have amp. So again, this, there's no evidence that black holes routinely produce any galactic jet, whatever that is. Blah, 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 blah. Again, there's no evidence that there's black holes. All there's evidence indicating is that there's mass and forms that we don't understand because it's not producing any visible light. And uh, But you could argue that it's not reflecting any light either, which is weird. So, fuck that. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't sound logical to me. Simple optical evidence for both Hubble and otherwise, with increasing magnitudes of solar masses, we have one and the same thing along the electromagnetic... So there's no evidence that these things are associated with solar masses, so I don't know what, you know, this is just talk. ...spectrum of electromagnetic radiation. Way down over here, we have infrared increasing, increasing in countless magnitudes, who knows what, 30, 60. Right, so he also implicit in what he's saying is somehow there's less magnitude in, in if we go higher than x-rays, that somehow the photons lose magnitude. There's no evidence of that. We just can't detect stuff at those frequencies because all of our uh, devices require... Um, yeah, you know, they're frequency sensitive, and we can only detect certain frequencies that we can create oscillations to match. We have to be able to create a matching frequency to detect a frequency, uh, essentially. <clears throat> and what we clearly do know, though, is that gravity's doing this. <laughs> yeah. The magnitude is greater than that of gamma. I mean, there's clearly forces that are invisible to our perception. Gravity, for example. Uh, the repulsion and the attraction in charge and magnetism. We can't see the force making it happen, but clearly we can see the consequences of the force causing it. And it's clearly simple, not this mush. Radiation, we actually have the emission of the fundamental building block of the entire universe, hydrogen, and of course all elements, as I'm in full agreement with all branches of science, are nothing other than compounded constructs of hydrogen. I mean, well, you could say of neutrons also, that neutrons are essentially a crude form, or even more, or, or you could argue even more, a sophisticated form of hydrogen, in the sense that it's more 
the electron and the proton are even closer to each other. And when they get further away, they become hydrogen. I, I don't think there's a single astrophysicist on Earth that doesn't agree that all elements uh, more complex than hydrogen are nothing other than compounded um, conglomerations of new... They're obviously more than that in the sense that they obviously have to um, create a sophisticated geometry to survive. So they're not just hydrogen atoms. They're obviously electrons and protons, which that's what the physicists will tell you. And that obviously the first, the simplest form of the relationship is the hydrogen atom, as we call the simplest form of an atom, um, in the sense that it has the fewest of those constituents that can be called a material atom. But that's all. There's no, you know, you can't just pile in hydrogens and make something. You have to pile them in in a specific way where you add enough charge. Obviously, you can't hold more negative charge than you have positive charge to pull it in. So you can't put more iron filings around your magnet than your magnet can um, affect. Little hydrogen that are actually fused and generate. I mean, you can only pick up so much weight with a magnet, so to speak. So it only has so much force that can be utilized. Um, and likewise, in an atom, you can't, you have to use the, the proportions. You can be a little bit off, but you can't be way off. And then the uh, reactions of stars, you know, the stars produce heavier and heavier elements. And, you know, that's hyperlogical, and it's impossible to disagree with that fact. So, uh, it's hyperlogical. I don't know. I mean, the evidence isn't outstanding. Um, but I would argue that obviously atoms have to be created in pressure. That's where you get to move the electrons and the protons around, is in a pressurized system. And the only atom arrangements that can survive outside of that pressure are the ones that we know of. There's probably lots of arrangements that can survive inside the sun, but they can't survive outside the sun. They can survive in pressure, but not outside. Uh, you know, but whatever. The reconciliation of light and matter is incredibly simplex. But okay, so I don't know how he did he did really honestly. Can any any of you people have any honesty at all? Any you know any integrity at all? Was there anything simple about how he reconciled matter and force here at all? Or or photons? Where was the reconciliation? Mother nature can't be that simple. We're simply looking at the electromagnetic spectrum where increasing frequency culminates literally in the generation of a ZTP, zero time particle. So a zero time particle. So now we have some new thing. So, so again, this isn't, again, he doesn't have to have any evidence. He can just create some new thing, a zero time particle. Whatever the fuck that could mean. Hydrogen. Here we have a radio pulsar. Here we have an X-ray pulsar. Here we have a gamma. Uh, pulsar, and here we actually have a black hole that's emitting trillions and trillions of tons of hydrogen, and all of these things have one thing in common. That is a... Uh, they are put together and then they fall apart <laughs> for some reason. Increasing, exponentially increasing solar mass. There's no exponential increase, again, the, in, so that's more nonsense. Um, it's just a nice line of increase, but there's no, again, there's no evidence. I haven't seen any evidence proving any mass relationship. There's a speed relationship. It can't be any more complex than that. It, it absolutely can't be. It's, it's just a... Yeah, okay, I could just draw a line across the thing and say, there, there's a simple line that explains how you relate this force stuff in this this whatever you want to call it and this matter stuff made of electrons and protons but again he didn't mention electrons so I don't know does he believe in electrons anyway thank you so much for watching hope you enjoyed this and goodbye Yes, way over advertised. Having trouble okay, yeah, there are ads before the video and after the video, by the way. 
um, for an analysis that's just absolute crap. 370 likes, 18 dislikes, uh, you know, and it's just plain crap. He didn't make anything simple, he didn't explain anything, he didn't illustrate anything, nothing, nothing, zero. Uh, I love you and your amazing channel, but of all the people you should know, these pics are you are examining are not real photographs. Oh, gee, I love you, but you know you are full of shit. Pulsars have nothing to do with neutron stars or black holes. So here we go. Just you now, you know, probably thumbed up the video though. Um, you're talking 0.25 slower than usual. I don't know. So he's obviously an idiot. Brilliant, pun intended. Spreading your information, hoping to wake people, keep the truths coming. And for what underlying purpose? What truth is the underlying crap that he's trying to sell here? It's just so vague. You're just amazed that this people will follow any any tune. You can play any kind of crap on your your tweeter. <laughs> you know, and some assholes will follow it. It just uh, it's just hard. It's just so depressing. Uh, this is your day. Enjoy. What the hell does that mean, Karen? One of your best explanations. Thank you. Greatly appreciate your work. I, I, how did I? I'm mean, just saying it on all honesty. I just can't see how there was any explanation of anything. Just stuns me. I, I mean, I wish I could interview these people and figure, find out what they think reality is. I mean, what kind of mush, you know? I love this. You're right. I know there's so much more out there which can be extrapolated beyond this, but fundamentally, you are so right. About what? Those sensible and constructive ex whatever. <laughs> nonsensical delusional psychotic disorder produced ego trips like modern academia is comprised of so again there's just so anti them that anybody anybody who's anti them uh, I really like the simplexity of your approach so more of this simplexity there was something simple well uh, I like the color green this was lovely it was lovely. <sighs> so, Ken, a proton is the fundamental particle? Yes, I, I mean, I would have to ask that question. That particle is an electromagnetic phenomenon? Yeah, that was confusing. Solar mass is a phenomenon of EM? Yeah, I mean, yes, why, why, how are the two connected? Uh, I mean, just amazingly bad nonsense. Well, anyway, I just, there's no point. There's no point. I'm on the wrong planet to do, um, to reason. There's no reasonable people here. <laughs> you know, so you can't have a reasoned conversation, apparently. Uh, anyway, I've got to go lie down. Uh,